What's going on everybody? It's Pelfrey and um, I mentioned this a while back that I was tired of storing my roadie water in buckets because they were um, all over my garage and just taking up way too much space. So I actually ran across um, this specific container on a couple different forums. And if you've ever looked up these containers before, you've probably noticed that the shipping is going to kill you uh, on any of these containers. But it just so happens that on Rural King's website, um, the shipping is actually manageable. But once you hit the $100 threshold, the shipping is free. So I picked up a 40-gallon Ace Roto mode vertical container. Um, it was about $76 and about $10 to ship. Um, the 55-gallon container was uh, just a little bit more expensive, but they wanted $200 to ship. And whenever I talked to Rural King, it was because the overall height of the 55. Now, it's worth mentioning that the 65-gallon and the 75-gallon container ship for free. So this particular container that I picked up comes with a bulkhead already installed. It's a threaded three-quarter um, inch bulkhead so all I had to do was get a threaded fitting and I glued a piece of three-quarter inch PVC into that with a uh, ball valve. While I was at the hardware store I went ahead and picked up four center blocks. I didn't really think that I needed to build anything specific for this. I wanted something quick and easy and if I wanted to move it around it would be very easy to move around. Um, and I know a lot of you may look at this and say you spent $100 on a water container and I could have very well gone with the brute trash cans but there's a couple reasons that I didn't and the number one reason that I did not go with a brute trash can is because of the width. I wanted something that wasn't going to be as wide uh, and take up as much space now. In the grand scheme of things a brute trash can probably would have only taken up about five or six inches more room to the left and right um, but I just wanted this container also because it has the gallon markings on it. And then the third reason is because this container actually has a seal. So whenever you screw the lid on top, uh, it actually has a seal and the brute trash cans just have a lid that go on uh, on the top of the trash can. And it does cover the water, but it doesn't necessarily seal the water. And I, I know people have stored water in brute trash cans for prolonged periods of time and not had any problems with it. But I just wanted to do everything that I could to make sure that my water wasn't going to get any dust or any other contaminants in it since it is in the garage. So my objective here is to store roadie water only. Uh, I don't have any plans to store salt water for uh, any period of time. I plan to mix salt water as needed. Um, but this will give me enough water in the event of an emergency or for my water changes or top offs that I don't have to run my roadie all the time. And ultimately I don't have buckets everywhere. So this is one of the last five gallon containers that I have. I'm just gonna go ahead and dump it into the, the 40 gallon container. Um, the jug that I do have draining into the 40 gallon container currently is the jug that I use to fill my auto top off off because it has the handle on it and it makes it so much easier to fill up my auto top off container with this specific jug. And if you get on Rural King's website and you look at any of these containers, it takes about four to six weeks to get. It took a right at about four weeks for me to get this specific container. And I've had it in service for about three weeks now. I've used, I think I have about 15, 20 gallons of water left in the container. So for those of you that are new to my channel, I am using the Spectre Pure 90 gallon per day uh, manual flush roadie unit. Um, this roadie is actually set up to make um, roadie water and uh, dechlorinated tap water so whenever I had a fresh water set up I could have made water with it but um, currently I have it set up with a valve and about 50 foot of Murloc line that I have ran from my laundry room out into the garage and it actually works pretty well minus the fact that whenever I'm done I will have to pull um, the Murloc line out so I should only have to fill up this container about once a month um, give or take maybe a couple of days or something so as of right now the way that I'm running this line is fine I am going to look at a more permanent solution as far as having this piped um, in a permanent situation so that I don't have to continuously run the hose out to the uh, container this particular roadie unit did come with the float valve that will shut the water production off um, so that is something else I'm going to be doing as well as I'm going to be drilling a hole in the top of the container to uh, have the Murloc connected to it so I don't have to remove the lid off of the water container every time. Um, go Wildcats. Here's just a, a plug for University of Kentucky. 
Um, but this is just an overview of the container in my garage and literally how much space it does not take up. Um, we're able to open the car door and I don't have to worry about the car door hitting the um, PVC coming out of the container. So it's probably worth mentioning that I am going to do another threaded fitting and another ball valve just because I want to scoot it back. I, I have about an inch or two of PVC pipe showing that I could do away with and I want to get it um, closer to the canister. That way there, it kind of reduces the, the chances of it getting snapped off. I did take a marker and the, the container comes with the um, gallon markings already on it and I just took a permanent marker and wrote over them so that I could better see them. And as I mentioned earlier, I do have a 90 gallon per day roadie unit. So it's taken about three or four evenings, running it at about four or five hours each evening to fill it up. Um, it, it does take a little while for me to fill it up. So I'd actually ordered the booster pump from Marine Depot about two or three months ago, but I never did hook up the booster pump because I was filling up five gallon buckets and I'm known for overflowing five gallon buckets and there'd be water sitting in the, the laundry room floor. Um, but before I hooked up the booster pump, I was getting about 40 PSI. I hooked up the booster pump and it greatly, uh, I should have done this a long time ago. I should have bought the, the 40 gallon container a long time ago. I, I, once again, I did not want to hook up the booster pump and pump the water into a five gallon bucket because I would have overflowed uh, a five gallon bucket in no time whatsoever. Um, but this was the booster pump at my house with the low pressure that I had was by far one of the best investments that, uh, that I picked up for the roadie unit. I should be able to fill up that 40 gallon container pretty quickly now. So I'm thinking about doing a couple things here. I'm either thinking about drilling a hole through the wall to the left of the door. Um, that's where my laundry room is and running the roadie, um, or excuse me, the Murloc line out um, through the wall instead of coming underneath the door so that I can have a permanent solution. Um, the other option that I have is I can move my roadie to the garage and run the water lines in the house. Um, I really would like to have the roadie unit in the garage and the only reason that I'm not really dead set on that idea is because in the winter I'm going to have to move the roadie into the house whenever I'm not using it. Regardless on where I permanently decide to mount the roadie unit, um, I'm going to have to drill holes through the wall. So I'm either going to leave it in the, the laundry room and I only have to drill one hole um, through the wall for the output. And if I do mount it in the garage, I'm going to have to drill two holes through the wall. Uh, one's going to have to be for my wastewater. Um, but if, once again, if, if you have low pressure and you're using a roadie unit, I highly suggest picking up a booster pump. I, I know they're kind of pricey at first, but they're, they're well worth it, especially if you have low pressure and you're trying to make a lot of water and you don't really want to spend, um, like I did initially whenever I filled up this container, a couple nights every evening uh, running the roadie. Um, it, from what I understand, it's better to run it for a prolonged period of time than on and off, on and off. Um, that's probably up for debate. I did end up running into a small problem. Uh, I actually measured the height of a five gallon bucket, but I did not measure the height of the container that I used to fill up my auto top off. Once again, I like this container because it has the, uh, the small um, top on it, so it pours out a lot easier than a bucket, and it also has a handle on it. Um, so what I'm going to end up doing is whenever this 40 gallon container is empty, I'm going to go get some, um, I'm not going to get any more center blocks, but they make some uh, four inch uh, concrete blocks that I'm going to put on top of the center blocks just to raise it up a little bit more. Um, the workaround currently is for me to slip a piece of three quarter inch PVC into the ball valve and it does allow me to fill up my auto top off. So it's not that big of a deal, but I would like to get this underneath it. I don't like putting the pressure on the PVC fittings there and I definitely don't want to snap them off and have 40 gallons of water uh, spill into the garage. So it is in the garage. Uh, if the water does spill into the garage, it's not that big of a deal, but uh, I want to make this as easy as possible. And since this is a gravity system, uh, I'm not gluing any of the PVC in to the left of the ball valve. That way I can easily remove it uh, and it doesn't stick out real far into the garage because if, if it did stick out, the, the car door would hit it. So as you can see here, uh, the five gallon bucket fits perfectly underneath there. I have a 90 um, just fitted on a piece of three quarter inch PVC, which is slid into the uh, ball valve. 
Um, and once again, this is not glued in there. It's easily removed. There's no pressure behind it, so there's really no reason for it to be glued in. Um, it, it allows me to remove it and reduce the um, length that it sticks out into the garage. And you know, with um, me and my wife and the kids out into the garage, I definitely don't want. Um, I want to reduce the amount of, of objects that can get snapped off of this container at, at all possible. So in the couple weeks that I've had this container, it's already paid off. Uh, I love being able to store the uh, 40 gallons of water in this one location, and I don't have uh, five, six buckets laying around now full of water. Um, I'm still going to use the buckets currently to mix salt water. Um, basically what I'm doing here is the green bucket has salt water mixed up. I'm going to do a water change and I'm going to go ahead and mix up another batch of salt water. And the only reason that I'm doing this is because I'm doing um, currently a couple water changes a week um, to fight some green hair algae that I've, I have in the tank. And the bucket to the right is the bucket that I stored my salt in. I buy the uh, Reef Crystal box and then I got a Home Depot bucket with a lid that actually snaps on. And again, this is a bucket that has a gasket on it that I store my salt in. So there's no way that moisture can get into that bucket at all. Um, I may look at a 20 gallon brute trash can sometime down the road to mix salt water in um, so I can get the wheels uh, and put the bucket on the wheels and better move it around. Uh, it, I'll cross that bridge whenever I get there. As of right now, the five gallon buckets are working out perfect for me. And as I mentioned, I don't have uh, any intention on mixing salt water for a prolonged period of time. So this works out perfect for me. I'll go ahead and close this video real quick with my final thoughts on this container. By all means, if you have the room for a brute trash can, um, go ahead and use it. There's no problem with the brute trash can. I like the, the Ace Roto for the multiple reasons that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. If you're interested, I'll leave the description below for the 40 gallon, the 65 gallon, and the 75 gallon container. As always, thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for all my new subscribers, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you have any questions.